that. I don't like that though. It doesn't make sense in this draft. Why so? I, it just feels like it's too much single target. I feel like they need something that's going to be able to do yeah. some some CC or you know cause people to to be aware of taking fights. I don't think you want to go for a pickoff lineup because there's too many saves on the side of East Coast. You pick up a Slark, right? You want a Slark. Slark typically wants to go for any sort of you know quick little ganks pickoffs. Oracle, no, he just laughs at you. Omni Knight laughs at you. Keeper of the Light, Blinding Lights, TPs out. See you later. That's a very good point, actually. Slark would have a bit of trouble uh, catching up to some of these heroes. I I still like the pick because of his matchup against Omnite and Gyrocopter, but I do agree that single target might not be the name of the game. You go for OD for now, so they keep that... Well, okay, wait. Does that mean Koka is offlane? Yes, right? Yes, probably. Or he's... Yeah, no. He's got to be offlane. So that's going to be a level You're not going to run OD carry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let I mean, Koka. you could. You could run OD carry. I don't like it. But you could. Oh, okay. You could exactly. Exactly. Anything you like, carry. But exactly. The world's your oyster, but please don't. Please don't. Please don't. The OD please carry. don't. No, no. Mm, I like the OD. You were talking about the lacking kind of like team fight, right? If you run the Konka in the offlane, he becomes much more of utility rather than the damage, right? So his ghost ship is more about the team fight potential it offers. OD also with Sandy's Eclipse can be really brutal, taking away all the mon and the team fight. It's good. Uh, you stop the potential crit luck mid Slark here against the Konka as well because OD just crushes him. I think that Pain Gaming is getting outdrafted right now, personally. Yeah. The reason why I say that is because OD takes a while to come online. He doesn't make things happen around the map. He's going to be one of those mids sure. that sits and farms. And yes, you know, he wins his lane. But Beast Coast, after a certain point, they don't care about lanes. They start grouping up. They realize, okay, we're strong now. We'll probably run like a, you know, some sort of an aggressive tri lane half the time. We're going to take this tower, and then from there, we're just going to start rolling together, and we're going to farm in the general vicinity of one of each other, but I just, I think that this OD is going to take too long to come online. I feel like the Chen isn't going to do nearly as as much as they would like. I don't know. I see some some huge issues with this draft coming out from Pain, and I could be totally wrong. You know, I am not a professional player by any means. I 100% own up to that, but just from what I've seen as a caster, this this worries me. You do have a point. The the Chen right now is actually not that fast of a hero anymore. Ever since they nerfed that, uh, what's it called, the divine conver the conversion. Mm -hmm. So now it's it's a bit weaker in the laning stage, which is very important. You can take advantage of that. You mentioned what you mentioned is really true. Beast Coast has a running at you lineup, and you have a slow and steady lineup. Okay, that's not good because that's the literal count to this lineup. OD can slow on the game somewhat. I think the idea of OD is let's win the lane hard and then crush Chris Luck, but that's a tall order because there's a lot of options, either jungling or just Chris Luck being better than you, sometimes happens. Uh, Pink Gaming last pick, the Bloodseeker for them. This does make your draft a bit faster now, which is nice. Uh, a lot of single target, all pickoffs. The idea is to have a bit of team fight, but mostly just get heroes, get stragglers, and try to put pressure on Beast Coast. I don't mind the Pink Gaming draft now with the Bloodseeker. It completes them nicely. And you do have a lot of setup for his uh, Blood Rite as well. I still don't like it. I still don't like it. I love these guys. I love these guys. Don't get me wrong. But I just feel like this draft is too all over the place. It's got too many pieces that like have to fit together perfectly. We've already seen Beast Coast run almost the exact same draft. And it was it was so easy for them. This is just it takes too long. You've got too many pieces. Like, yeah, Kunkka, you know, you're running him as position three, that's great, but like where's your damage coming from? Like the Bloodseeker, yeah, he's gonna have some damage online, but like OD does not hit towers. Oh my god, all right, yep, they're done. GG. <laughs> Try to find a way to, to save uh, 70 grades for PA, but honestly, this Broodmother really uh, is the last nail in the coffin, honestly. I mean, they technically have ways to deal with Broodmother, but I think people nowadays confuse that Brood is not so much a spider link hero, but just a farm fast hero. You dominate the mid lane, OT is very bad against you in the mid lane, unless, unless you go for a weird build. Uh, the way to counter Broodmother in the lane sometimes is getting more points in Arcane Orb to deal with the spiders and even ignoring your Astro Imprisonment together, altogether, sorry, or just keeping one point in it, but then you're weaker in the mid lane anyway. Broodmother's going to be able to outfarm anyone here. Broodmother's fantastic against Bloodseeker because the Spiderlings just do the job for her and she heals in the webs. I'm still speechless. Okay, I'm right. sorry. <laughs> Like this is this is a fantastic draft coming out from Stinger. They've got some ways to deal with the Brood yeah. Mother, but they don't have enough. They're not going to have enough damage to take down. You know, like this is this draft just comes on so fast for Beast Coast. 
It's going to be so difficult. And like, you know, yeah, you've got this Bloodseeker. And one of the things that Bloodseeker really depends on, obviously, is Thirst. Having, you know, heroes be fairly low. But they've all got pretty elegant solutions in dealing with, you know, keeping their health up. Yeah, you know, Schofield doesn't have anything. Gyrocopter probably is going to be kiting anyways. But you look at the three other heroes here. You've got a heal on every single one of them. You've got people that are fairly tanky. You've got, you know, the Heavenly Grace online for Whisper, which is going to make a lot of these spells not really last that long. I... I think Pain Gaming, I think they lost in the draft. But again, I am not a professional. They might know something I don't. We're going to see, though. We have a game number two. And I'm hoping that this is going to be uh, a close one. But I'm, I'm a little doubtful on this right now. I think one of the points that you make is a, is a very important one here, which is the... The, the the ease of execution, right, of Beast Coast Draft as opposed to Pain Gaming. Like, everything has to go perfect for Pain for it to work out. A lot of little cogs that have to fit together. And all like, it's not like these are a Wombo Combo, you know, the Witch Doctor Void or whatever. It's just the Blood Right plus Disruption. Oh, wow. But it still has to fit together in the right position. And when we just saw a team that just got out-executed so hard in the first game, this is not the ideal draft to go for. When you're, when you're potentially going to be brought down, you want to go for a secure draft, not for a draft that is closer to experimental or perhaps a draft that is hard to execute, etc., etc. I also don't love the ADR uh, Owl Devourer, to be honest. I think the guy's better on heroes like Invoker, for example. Don't I don't think the Audi switch his style too much. Yeah, we've talked about this before. You know, Adriano is very good at playing some of the flashier heroes. That's not to say that he's a bad OD. I've seen him play it before, and, and he's definitely good. But definitely. he definitely doesn't shine like uh, like he could. So they are doing some scouting over here. You can see the uh, the captains of the guard over here, Lelis and Theo Lacour, guarding this room. We'll find Whisper over here in the tree line. It's going to be pretty hard to take him down, as you can see already that missile getting dropped by Hector. I don't think you're going to be able to see any sort of a kill coming out, although they do manage to kill off that missile. Whisper throwing his weight around. In comes the Coddle, though. All of a sudden, this becomes very, very scary for the side of Pain Gaming. As they're just pushing him back. The Olacourt, yeah, he's got that Shadow Poison, but it's not going to do too, too much just yet. Schofield still standing nearby. Did force him to take that Illuminate instead of the Blinding Light, though. And it looks like they actually are going to miss this rune. 444 oh, will grab it. it. But are they going to get the first cost. blood? What's going on? We got 444 over here getting chased down by Hector. And I have a feeling he's going to be able to c get that final hit. Unless Roshan wants to help a bro out. In fact, yeah, he's going to get that. And take a look over here. Theolacor is just chasing after Schofield. But again, it's level one poison. It's not going to do that much. And you know what? I think Schofield's absolutely fine with being chased all the way back to base. Because he's out of health. He's out of mana. He's just going to be able to go right back to lane now. Yep. And they're shopping lanes anyway. They want to run the gyrocopter bottom against the... Oh, it is OD carry. We weren't wrong about this. They just had to they run the OD lanes. in the K position. They yeah. had to swap lanes. You don't There's no run. way that you could send the OD against the Broodmother. I don't think the Bloodseeker is too better. Too much better, to be honest with you, though. It's a uh, little he, bit better. Uh, um, you can go for Bloodright and you out harass him to some degree, but you should still be able to outlast it a Bloodseeker once you get a couple of Spiderlings up. Uh, you can always go jungle as well. That's the thing. They, they lack the catch for the Broodmother. That's what's so scary. They don't have a way to stop her from just going all over the map and ignoring your heroes completely. And they actually said, oh wow, all right, they made a full rotation. They sent Adriano to the top lane. Whisper TPing now to the bottom. They know what the matchups are. And this is something I really like out of a lot of these teams, especially in South American region. You're seeing them constantly, you know, not afraid to play those musical chairs with their lanes. They know, okay, this isn't going to work. And at the same time, some of the less experienced teams, they tend to do a little bit too much lane swapping, right? But, and the yeah. ones that are more, uh, more disciplined, it's not a problem. It's hard to find the right like amount, right? How much do you care about the lane matchup? It's just experience. Understanding how valuable, like mathematically per se, how to quantify how valuable a lane matchup is to you, in your favor. I'll say to some degree though, this is pub experience, honestly. They, they, these guys come from pubs mostly, so they go, well, I want the good lane for me. That's what I would like in my pubs as well. And it does make sense, which it does work out for them in their favor. I think Beast Coast has mastered this pretty well. They always really prioritize uh, Ector's lane. And it let Whisper kind of be the sacrificial lime almost always. I, You know, I've been a big fan of Whisper ever since he first got picked up on Infamous. I know he got picked up mm -hmm. twice, technically. <laughs> yes, um, on the original stack you're referring to, yeah. But back, I think it was uh, one of the Dream League, the Dream League Major qualifiers, actually. I was in Sweden. Mm -hmm. And I was like, don't sleep on this guy. This guy has so much talent. 
Um, he's very good at, you know, like you said, being that sacrificial lamb, but also just breaking those ankles. Um, he's very good at juking. Oh, yes. I like to see him more on a playmaking sort of offlane. Of course, who doesn't like to see a playmaking offlane? But he's really coming to his own here now, being, you know, more of that steady farming sort of offlane. He's really improved quite a bit, so... Super happy. I've, I've just yeah. been really happy with this team, the way that they've, they've improved over time. And it's really interesting yeah. to watch this now, because I, I kind of consider Payne, I don't want to say like super old guard, but they definitely have been around the scene. They're kind of the rock stars. They've been around for a while. And then seeing these new kids come in and kind of showing what they got. I, I really enjoy it. Oh, it rumbles the scene. In fact, you're seeing this now in Peru, like the qualifiers, for example, Incubus. That would have never happened in, in old SA qualifiers. A team of full new blood coming in and actually making it pretty far in the qualifiers. Infamous didn't even make it past the group stages, you know? The the scene is being shaken up, and all the old guard is saying, wake up, guys. The the new guys are coming for you. If you don't start playing better, if you don't start getting the same results that Viscos is doing, you're going to fall behind. Oh, all right. There's a... Was that a suicide? I'm no, guessing it was a suicide. It was a suicide, yes. Yeah. So the thing that's kind of interesting. Yes, so they funny. have. They're, so they don't really count. Although I guess one of them does count on the board. Uh, Odd how Dota decides this. I, oh yeah, because yeah, because Tio Licor decided that he was going to go to a neutral creep, which is interesting. Right. So it, it feels like last year was the year of the Brazilian teams, right? We had Pain Gaming that became Chaos. Um, that were really, you know, showing their worth. They really started to get that respect pushed onto the South American scene because we've had Infamous for a while, but they haven't had the greatest of uh, of showings for a bit now. Chris Luck. They yeah, did beat Newbie though. They beat Newbie in the first major. They did. <laughs> That's they did. And that every was Peruvian will know. <laughs> But uh, I mean, it was a best of one. Yeah, I don't know. I, I like the meme though. That's the thing everyone remembers. Like the biggest accomplishment. And now we have TI though, so it's all good. Now we have TI for sure. But uh, yeah, it definitely felt like last year was the year of the Brazilians. I think this year it, it might be the year of the uh, the Peruvians and the Bolivian. I think I want to start calling Whisper the Bolivian <laughs> from now on because he is the uh, the representative over here. But oh yeah, did you see the deals he got back in his country? No, I didn't. Uh, Burger King, so Hamburguesa obviously Cat Burger, right? So Burger King made a whole promotion. Uh -oh. and Hold that thought, Whisper. I think Whisper's dead down here. This will be our first official first blood if he's not careful. In fact, there it is. 4DR getting the first blood on Whisper. There we go. So that's fantastic. Burger uh, Whisper, King, Hamburguesa. Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Made sense. Thank you for rotating back to that because I was excited to talk about it. Yes, they promoted him. They sent him like a little package, care package, like support him in the major. Oh in fact, God, he was actually so cool. on national television. Uh, uh, Bolivian caster got brought up to cat national television and they just cast all the Whisper games. It was wonderful. It was That's great. incredible. I'm actually so excited about that. HFN in the mid lane does get rotated on by Stinger. He's sitting at that level 3, which does a lot of damage. But already Lelis has made his own rotation. Yep, that, that rotation by Lelis early was good because the ideal rotation you want to do, or sorry, yeah, it was by Lelis. Or by ADR, uh, you want to rotate and get a kill, so that it makes sense that you rotate it, so it's not a wasted time. That's the ideal rotation, and they do, they managed to get Whisper down bottom, it was fantastic. Uh, now you're back to the lanes you originally wanted, here comes HFN, nice rotation as well. And... I think Hector, Hector's probably dead here. Yeah, they have Thirst now. Yeah. <laughs> when you rock a barrage the air, you're just desperately trying to survive. Uh, you figure, use your spells, right? At the end of the day. Yeah. You know you're gonna die, use your spells, you're gonna go and cool down, and you gotta walk to lane anyways, or at least TP, so... Oh, I do wonder, actually, does he have a TP off Golden? That's important for Rector. Oh, he doesn't have gold for TP. Someone oh, drop a drop TP. Oh, drop a TP. Drop your TP. <laughs> well, I guess he, he'll just walk the lane, fine, or fly the lane. That shared uh, tango, Unfortunately, there's a lot of lost. Yeah, they do <laughs> drop that for him. From Whisper, nonetheless, as well, as one of your uh, cores for sharing the tango. He's going to be falling behind a bit with this. So he's actually not doing too well this time, Hector. They managed to cancel him pretty well, Pain. They already pushed the fort out down here in this middle lane. They want to give HFN, let him have that tower. But there's a lot of spider babies here. And they've even taken over the other side of the jungle. Look at this. They see the Chen creeps too. Be interested to see if they try to just nibble those away. But we'll go right back to lane here. Chris Lux's broodmother is actually something to be feared. This guy is very, very yes. good with it. As, out of all the heroes he's really good with, honestly, his hero pool is actually kind of insane. It's, it's funny, because once upon a time, it wasn't. Do you remember? No. Yeah. He was the, the what was it, TA that was like his pick? And it was TA and Monkey King, and that was pretty much yes, it. Yes, Monkey King, yeah. Wow. 
how how the times have changed and now he's even uh an interview i actually saw for the spanish channel uh, samael called him one of the best mid laners in the nti it was very oh. he was like this guy's like pop guy that's and big. I, we were all very proud yeah it's big ramsey's too the three words he uttered in spanish were chris luck is bueno that was great very proud <laughs> that's yeah. awesome that's great and to yeah, see this, guy this new talent grown a lot. oh he, he's a such a, a charmful person as well hector and him are, are fantastic um which is funny because Jenkins they're. tells me stories about him just not caring, like, ever. Like, he's like, I'm pretty sure he spit on a stage at one point. Like, he just... <laughs> I don't know, but it That's is... That's like something Jenkins would say, to be honest, though, <laughs> yeah, as he yeah, spins yeah. the story out of control. It's fun, though. It's it's really fun to watch these players, especially, you know, seeing them come up from, like, open qualifiers to eventually, you know, making it to Quirrell's qualifiers and getting picked up by a team. I know that, like, it sounds kind of weird, but, like, I think of these guys as my kids because I've watched them for so long. These are my bebecitos. Yeah, like, uh, it's, that's perfectly it's fine. The same thing they accept with, you as their mother. <laughs> the same thing with pain gaming, though. Like, watching them, you know, it took a while for them to get the attention that was needed, and they really did open up the South American scene. So people started taking them more seriously. So, you know, yeah. I know there's a lot of rivalry between the uh, Brazilians and the Peruvians, but they really are, you know, making the scene a better place together. I don't know. That's too hippie of me, I guess, but... No, no, you're right, though. Like, they, I think most people acknowledge this. Like, the rivalry is healthy rivalry. Oh, top lane, though, I think Whisper is a... Uh, Whisper's just oh. running around in circles trying to chase <laughs> yeah, after actually. that uh, Alpha Wolf. I thought I was, uh, like, Whisper running at 444, but I didn't care. Yeah, it's a healthy rivalry for the most part. It's fine to have rivalry like these. Oh, ADR there's, just came in. Thanks there's a lot of TPs. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if we can... Is Whisper just making them waste a ridiculous amount of time right now? Uh, he absolutely is, because Adriano's not farming. He might get the kill at least. Just That's follow me kill. into the woods, friends. Follow <laughs> me. And already you can see Schofield making his own rotation. And they're actually going to send Hector up here too. And this is one of the things I really appreciate about Hector. Especially playing the, the gyrocopter, right? The fact that he knows it's when to farm and when to actually come fight. Yeah, it's true. He's he's learning that though. I think in TI he was lacking that skill a bit, but as as time has progressed, he's been getting better and better at that. And playing these kind of cores that are more hybrid, just not just hardcore farmers. It's good. I mean, like you're saying, it's just progress, right? Beast Coast is actually progressing really quickly, and I think it's partially because they're such new blood. They're so excited to just keep on playing. Mm. Now, uh, Schofield. Let's see. Did he mean uh, to grab know, the hill troll I'm... instead of the hill troll priest? Yeah, because you can't grab the Hiltrol Priest. Oh, that's true. I forgot about that. My bad, my bad. This is dead Schofield, though. He tries to go and get that Denial. Not going to be able to do it. And Pain yeah, Gaming manages to grab themselves control. quite a few of these runes. Mate, they're going for Chris Luck as well, but... Oh, oh. Rupture. I'll see. Silence stop. Go ship two, away, Chris though. Luck. This is probably a very dead Chris Luck. In fact, that Ultimate is the case. Instinct. Manages to get that Midas off, though. Oh. Did you see Lelis though? Just cleared the creeps off as well, so that's oh. pretty bad for them. That's a lot of gold going Lelis' way. Not the creeps, sorry, the Siderlings. I understood what so, you meant. No problem. Thank you, buddy. So this uh, is interesting minus... because if you take a look at what's going on here, we've got a 3k net worth lead on the side of Pain Gaming. Uh, and they also do have a kill lead, but it doesn't feel like they're that far ahead. Does it? Hmm. I don't know, I think they're really crushing Hector though. They're taking a really good job stopping true. Hector. And, uh, it's, it's what you talked about earlier, right, with Echefin K. I think you can apply that to Hector too. You're saying, if some teams just stop his farming and they forget about him, not paying, man. They know they have to continue this constantly. And Hector often, one of his uh, drawbacks, but also his strengths, is that he likes to go for builds that are just fully farm oriented. He'll use Infest to kill creeps just to farm faster. Mm -hmm. Use Midas just not to get experience, but just to get gold. He doesn't even complete Wraith Bands because it's more efficient technically to go for slippers. He's the king of efficiency. But this does put you at a disadvantage when it comes to fighting early. And Hector understands this, which is why Pain is taking advantage of this. It's a good play. Yeah, and then top lane, it was looking like Stinger was trying to just keep them off the tower. Unfortunately, though, for him, Theolacor, right place, right time, throwing out that Shadow Poison disruption, and of course having HFN here. So they're going to be able to take this top tower pretty uncontested, I have a feeling, especially when you consider the amount of creeps that they've got along with this Chen. But you can see their own movements coming down towards the bottom lane. Adriano hiding in the tree line. He's sitting at level 8 right now. He needs more help, though. He definitely... Oh, oh, look at the hunt. Schofield! Not going to be able to grab the OD. He TPs out just in the nick of time. At least this initial, or this attack down bottom guarantees a tower, which is 
a bit of recovery farm for Hector here, if they can take it. I mean, they're, they're using the cliff, but I think they should have enough damage regardless. Beast Coast, though. Oh, uh, they also need to defend Chris. Yeah. Nice movement. Oh, oh, the spiders, Ooh. they're gone. All right. I'm trying Thank to remember. I remember someone was playing Broodmother against, I believe it was Lelis's Kunkka. And I'm not sure if it's... The, it obviously wasn't Chris Luck at the time. But I remember him just like absolutely running over the brood. This lineup is looking yeah. good for Pain though. They are managing to take this top tower now. Uh, they are trying to do a little bit of split tower push though. Coming out from the side of Beast Coast. You can see there's someone in the mid lane. Someone in that top lane. And there is a very dead Coddle over here. So he is going to tank the gank as the rest of the side of East Coast are going to try to run themselves away right now. So they took the top tower and they got themselves a kill. Bottom. I say that's pretty good. Bottom lane too. They find the kill on Hector. Alright, Pain Gaming. Yeah. Turning it up to 11. They're playing this well. Uh, they are understanding the sh the weaknesses of, of Beast Coast's lineup. They're putting pressure on Hector ideally. And something I loved here. A lot of teams, they make the mistake of actually chasing after Beast Coast supports or even Whisper. Yes. And they just waste a lot of time. Here, they divide the effort. They understand two heroes are enough, and they put two heroes down bottom to make sure that Hector also goes down. Very well played here. It's going to have to be Chris Luck here, who has to become more of a carry at start uh, and create some space for Hector. And for now, it's a bit tough. He needs the Axe, needs a couple more items to actually start becoming the Broodmother we all know and love. So Hector will have a bit of a tough time for the next couple of minutes until Chris Luck can start becoming the pressure creator. Also Whisper. Whisper can start doing that too, but he's also falling behind a bit, unfortunately. Alright, bottom tower is getting some pressure being placed down here by Pain. I'm liking the way they're taking this now. They're taking good objectives, they're taking, uh, you know, they find a kill, and they're translating over. They know that it's going to take a little bit long for Hector, but they might be in trouble over here. It's like, do the call down. The will o -Wisp on top of everything else. A nice boat comes out. They've got the save, though. Stinger going to be able to keep him alive. Theolacor throws out the bubble. He's actually going to get drawn right back in again. Should be able to find this kill on Theolacor. As the rest of the team does manage to TP out on the side of Pain Gaming, they are going to lose that tower. So, on the positive side, you got a kill, and it was a gyrocopter. On the negative side, you rotated five or four heroes, you used Will O Wisp as well, and you still lost your tower. So, it's not ideal for Biscos there. <laughs> not ideal indeed. Look at Lelis, he's just waiting. He's like, yeah, show me those spiders. Yeah, I he is. He, he, he knows right. that he. The thing about killing the spiders is that, well, yes, it's gold for Lelis, but it's also really slowing down Chris Luck's farm, which is why he's not leading a net worth. Uh -oh. oh, now, by the way. Stinger, he does not have the False Promise. He just used it on Hector. And uh, they do manage to get the kill over onto Schofield. They're still chasing after Stinger now. It's a little bit of space, I suppose, but <laughs> this is definitely uh, not ideal for the side of Beast Coast as they just keep racking it up. 3-0 and 3 right now on the OD. So he hasn't really been sitting like heavy farming, but I think he's been making up with it in the amount of engagements he's been taking. Yeah, this build is a relatively early game away to build. Early cod yet to make sure you can build up some damage. Oh. Middle lane, and they've got their eyes on Chris Luck again. This should be an easy kill for them, although he does have the incapacitating play. Oh, beautiful play by Theo Lacour, making sure he can't nibble on anybody, and he just pops. Whisper is now just going in one by one. This is a disaster. This is not what Beast Coast needs to be doing right now. They need to be more disciplined than this. Going in one by one is only going to cause problems. In fact, look at that. Whisper, he throws out that Heavenly Grace, but it doesn't affect the X marks the spot, and he will eventually pop when he comes out of this Astral. Well, that... Beast Coast uh, losing Whisper there on top of the initial gank against the Broodmother. Who's supposed to be the space creator right now? They're going to use Coddle as well. Schofield, Schofield, sorry. In trouble. Nope. They actually has a great battling light, so he's going to be fine. But Beast Coast. Oh. Hector 2. Oh, that's big. Jesus. They, they have no space to farm. They're being choked to death right now by Pain. That's exactly how Pain should be playing. They, this Bloodseeker has worked out well for them. Very, very well. And the Kunkka in the offlane as well. This is working out quite well for them. You know, I was very concerned when I saw that Broodmother. In fact, I was speechless. I thought that they had just totally lost, but they're showing up with a vengeance here over on the side of Pain. And I like it. I want a close game. This is not even a close game right now. 13-1 to 1 with an AK lead at 16 minutes. Yep. We still haven't seen the guys at Beast come online, but they've managed to crush Hector so hard that I don't normally know what his options are. Especially with his build being a farming-oriented build, he's not meant to fight early. If you had drums here, you could kind of muster kills using Rocket Barrage and taking advantage of his early game damage, but now it's a bit too late for that. And Bloodseeker's already online. He's PKB. HFN is also an insane farmer, grinning now that he's beating Hector by a lot. Alright, Stinger, I'm not sure why he showed up over here right now. That was a bit of a head-scratcher, if you ask me. 
you want to have your, your Oracle sit as far back as possible. I guess they don't have too many great frontliners though at this time, so I think they're just going to have to watch this tower go down. Nothing they can they do about it. And guess what's outside of the Roche pit? A double damage. Wow. Double Could be damage. more perfect. Take a tower, take a Roche, maybe? What do we think, I mean, boys? Yeah. Yeah, we go. Why not? This is the BKB for HFN after this Roche is done. Well, he has it already, but he's going to come by. We also have a, a Crimson Guard on Lelis, which is absolutely fantastic against the Broodmother. So Chris Luck is going to have a really tough time being impactful here. They need extra to come online. I don't know about this team fight. There's a smoke attempt. I don't think you go I, anywhere near that pit right now. You let them have it. I don't think they know there's a pit. Yeah, I realize now. It's tough for Beast Coast because they can't play their usual style of create space for Hector uh, or sacrifice supports at key locations as long as you get more space on Chris Luck and Hector. They're too a bit too far behind right now. Well, they've got their eyes on this bottom tower, so they're going to need to take it very, very fast because they're definitely eyeing this top tower here in the dire base. When I think they're perfectly fine with trading. Yeah, look at this. The, the pings are coming out. They need to TP home. You need to TP home. Your Coddle's not going to do anything here right now. you got to send him home, try to push off just a little bit. Oh, Back, the no. call down comes out. They immediately find Hector. They drop the Sandy's Eclipse, but they have the save. They do have that save coming out from Stinger, and they'll follow up with the Guardian Angel. Beautiful Willow was going to be able to drag back four different people. But HFN, he's got a BKB. He doesn't care. They're going to be able to just take down Hector. No problem. Whisper runs back into that base, and they actually call the GG. So this is why you do not listen to me when I say that a draft looks like they have no chance because Pain Gaming... They proved me wrong, for sure. I mean, I don't think you should uh, be so harsh on yourself there, because to be honest, Pain, the draft looked, you know, we said it, it was a hard execution, but they did execute it perfectly. I, I can't imagine, honestly, doing better than that. Put pressure on Hector, swap lanes so you win the lane against Hector. Commit enough musical lanes to make sure Hector doesn't get farmed. Uh, secure, go for an early game build on OD, cancel the Broodmother with Kunkka. You couldn't wish for a better game. Pain Gaming played that perfectly. Beast Ghost kind of lost the plot halfway through, though, should be said. They were, they were having a bit of trouble, you know, with their supports, and the whole idea of sacrificing didn't really work out there for them. So, we'll see how game number three goes, though. Maybe, I mean, first game 22 minutes, next game 18 minutes, this last game has to be a 60-minute game, just to make up for it. <laughs> It'd be good to see uh, to see some action across the board, for sure. But, uh, yeah, so we are going to take a short break, guys. What you're seeing on the screen right now is not the last game. For whatever reason, I cannot... Oh, oh it looks like I just reconnected to the uh, Dota 2 coordinator. But uh, we are going to take a short break, and when we come back, we will have game number three.